How is ADHD diagnosed and what can you expect during a typical ADHD assessment? Hi there, my name's Dante, I'm a registered psychologist and I'm going to try to quickly but accurately walk you through what you might expect when you or your child gets assessed for ADHD. Now technically a psychologist, a psychiatrist or a pediatrician can diagnose ADHD according to the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. There's a list of criteria and it includes what symptoms must be present, how long these symptoms must have been present for, and we need to make sure that the symptoms can't be better explained by another condition. This last step is the hardest but it's also the most important and it's called the differential diagnostic process. And it's about determining if ADHD is the primary cause of the symptoms or if something else is at play. See, ADHD isn't the only cause of attention difficulties. Depression, anxiety, PTSD, autism, OCD, bipolar disorder, early onset dementia, all of these can affect focus. Therefore, a thorough ADHD assessment has to do more than just ask questions like, do you struggle focusing? It needs to be really accurate because if the wrong thing gets diagnosed, then the person's gonna get the wrong treatment. So how does a good assessment actually look? The typical diagnostic process starts with structured interviews and questionnaires. So talking a lot and asking a lot of questions and also ideally asking other people to get extra information. So people like parents, peers, partners, and teachers. These interviews and questionnaires are backed by research and they're standardized. So of course there's gonna be questions about attention and concentration and hyperactivity. And there'll be a lot of questions about how these symptoms actually impact the person's life. We also want to get a family history because ADHD is highly genetic, so if there's a family history of ADHD, that's going to be a big clue as to what's going on. Also getting the results of a recent medical exam is going to be really helpful to rule out biological conditions. So for example, ruling out things like thyroid conditions, sleep disorders, or nutritional problems is going to be helpful because all of these can impact and affect attention and concentration. Also getting an understanding of the developmental history is really important. Checking if and when developmental milestones were hit is really important when assessing for a neurodevelopmental disorder, which is the category of disorder disorder that ADHD falls under. But there will also be questions related to other mental health issues, because like mentioned earlier, many other mental health issues cause difficulties with attention and concentration. So sometimes it's not ADHD, it's something else. And sometimes it's ADHD and something else. Knowing what's actually going on is really, really important because then the correct treatment can actually be recommended. Depending on the client's presentation, sometimes there's cognitive testing to assess for things like processing speed issues or working memory issues, as occasionally these are the primary culprit behind any symptoms and impairment. These issues very often do coexist alongside ADHD, but sometimes they can exist as the primary cause of what's going on and can require their own unique treatment. Also in an ideal world, getting information beyond questions and interviews is really, really helpful. For adults, having the historical school report cards or any historical feedback from teachers can be really, really nice. For kids, being able to actually go to the classroom and observe with my own eyeballs what's actually going on is really, really nice. Because sometimes I can really figure out, is this a problem with the kid and their attention and hyperactivity, or is it an environmental issue? However, often observations just aren't realistic. They take a lot of time, therefore they take a lot of money, and often schools will block outside observers from coming into the classroom in the first place, citing privacy concerns. Some clinicians use things called continuous performance tests. These are activities where you engage with a piece of software that basically measures how long can you maintain focus on a single electronic task for. But these are really, really controversial. For one, there's subsets of people with ADHD that can still perform well on these tests, and there's big subsets of people without ADHD that perform really shittily on these tests. So they're not super accurate, they're not super discriminatory, and they're not very reliable. And beyond that, they don't correlate with real world performance either. And improvements on your score in these performance tests don't correlate with improvements in function in the real world. So while there are some clinicians that like to use these, unless some new high quality research comes out that shows that they're reliable and discriminatory and valid, I'm not using them. So far in this video, we've already talked about standardized interviews, questionnaires, cognitive tests, ruling out other mental health disorders, getting a family history, a developmental history, and observational data. On the note of ADHD medication, I'll quickly right now talk about the point of do they work, and I'll make a big video later on about the different types of ADHD medications. So all of the best high quality research from multiple countries, for multiple demographics, ages, genders, etc., all shows the exact same thing. ADHD medication is effective for treating the symptoms of ADHD, and it's more effective at treating ADHD than any other medication is for treating any other mental health issue. What I mean by this is ADHD medication works better for ADHD than antidepressants work for depression, than anxiolytics work for anxiety, and so on. Obviously they're not perfect for everybody and there's side effects to all of them, but the scientific research is incredibly clear that on average, but not for everybody all the time, they are massively more helpful than harmful. And when medication is used in conjunction with something like cognitive behavioral therapy for ADHD, 
you get the best results with increased lifespan, increased productivity, increased life satisfaction, increased mood, basically just everything. Final note, and this is important. Sometimes during the course of assessment, you'll realize that ADHD isn't actually the explanation for what's going on for you. It might be something else causing your attention and concentration difficulties. Be open to hearing this, because if the data is pointing in another direction, then that's probably the best way to go. Because if you need treatment, you want it to be the most accurate treatment for what's actually going on for you. Then after all of this, if you have any questions, you know where to leave them. Bye.